As you guys know, we are on, we build a music playlist every week on Spotify. And right now, um, that's basically how the artists are being paid. They're being paid through streaming. The streaming technology is is, is monetized now. Um, you got, a lot of you guys are buying new cars, and a lot of those cars do not come with CD players. Everything is streaming. A lot of the cars are coming with built-in Wi-Fi systems. Um, so now you don't have to worry about your data. You can just run it on the Wi-Fi uh, for stronger and, and longer, you know, continuous streams. So, uh, so that's where we are right now. Y'all know when we drive down to Virginia all the time to visit family and my daughter. We were listening to iHeartRadio and Spotify. I mean, one of my childhood friends I grew up with. I don't know a lot of you guys remember um, the New Marks. They were actually the group that produced that song, uh, "Girl, I Think You Find Something Like." It was it was it was uh, performed by um, Nilly Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. If you guys remember Millie Vanilli, it was a group that was over in UK. Uh, the brother was the brown skinned brother, light skinned brother had the long uh, locks, and they uh, they they was I mean they was killing it. I think they had two or three big hits, but found out they weren't singing the songs, <laughs> so uh, they got busted. And um, but that was one of the hits it was written by the New Marks and um, DJ Spin and a lot of you guys know um, uh, Kevin um, Kevin Lyles from uh, Def Jam. Uh, well, he was in the New Marks. He was one of the rappers. And I uh, grew up with those guys. I used to work with them guys. Um, and, um, you know, we frequent the same clubs and they parties. And I uh, actually hired them to, uh, to, put, to do some um, some stuff for us. When well, my brother and I was doing productions on the Eastern Shore. And, um, that, of course, Kevin went on to be, uh, I think, like the vice president of Def Jam. And I think, I think he's still doing a lot of uh, executive work in the music industry. And, and DJ Spin, I think he's one of the top uh, European DJs uh, over in Europe. Not, well, he's African-American, but over in Europe. So uh, that's the kind of stuff that's been um, been happening. Uh, you know, these guys uh, t- took their talent, their music, and, and they blew up. So, um, so with all that said... I listen to a lot of DJ Spin stuff on Spotify. Um, when I'm on the, in the in the workout room, I want something that's you know is going to you know keep keep my drilling flowing. You know those hard beats, and um, we get a chance to uh, listen to him. And uh, he actually actually has albums out uh, with his house music. We call it here in Baltimore. So anyway, uh, so anyway, we've been building a playlist of all the the top ten artists that we find that's been promoting really hard on Facebook and they tagging us. Um, they releasing new albums, new, you know, uh, singles, but well, we, we going to help you guys out. So we want to uh, work with you guys and um, get you out there to the masses. And hopefully we get some of you guys to come into the Merlin area to uh, be part of our, our television productions. So, so that's, that's what we got. That's what we got in place. So you got to use all the platforms in order for it to work. All right. We're going to break to a song real quick as we get ready for Miss Lockhart. And I'm waiting for Paula G to dial in so we can chat with her real quick. So uh, let's listen to uh, uh, one of the artists out of the DMV. And we call her Shea Sarah. Here we go. And this one is called What If He's Real. And I think she's joined by GB. He's up in the D.C. area. Yeah. We belong to a master who longs for us to trust him as the answer. Cause a big bang can't creatively design. It doesn't have intentions cause it doesn't have a mind. In orbital rotations, how the planets are aligned. Too far left or right and the planets all collide. A seed must die in the dirt for it to thrive. Then remain buried in the earth and stay alive. Cells know just when and how to reproduce. So a cow won't have a fin and a fish won't have a hoop. A 10-pound bird is free to fly to and from. The human version weighs about 500 tons. New species, new planet scientists discover. like they get to see God up close and live in color. I wonder if I only have the power to create. Because it's in my blood from my father's DNA. What if he's real? What if he lives and breathes and he's just waiting on me? Yeah. What if he 
he's frail. What if he hears and speaks and he's just waiting on me? Yeah. What if he's frail? What if he moves and sees and he's just waiting on me? Yeah. What if he's frail? What if he lives and breathes? I only got one life to get it right. What if there's a God who created the perfect plan for me? And it don't involve getting crunk up in this dancery. All my frustrated impatience from not having things was life outside of the palace. Why my dad is king, a royal priesthood. He wants to treat me good because he just loves to look after me. I knew some saved, but I couldn't tell the difference. They acknowledge his existence, but were hiding from repentance. That made me ignore the tug on my heart faithfully. So God made it blatant. There's a Satan in and he's chasing me. I didn't believe I was a heathen that needed someone to pray for me. Long story short, I'm a good report. Thank you, G. I've been on that side. I've been in that ride. Tipsy and high. Pretending I could physically drive. Lifting my eyes. I prayed he was real in that moment. Then I made it home and still did what I wanted. Mine. What if he's real? What if he lives and breathes and he's just waiting on me? What if he's real? What if he all right, that was uh, Shea Shara, and that one was called What If He's Real, and I believe I thought GB was in that one. Maybe that's not the one that GB is in, but um, I love that song, and you can catch her on uh, episode two on uh, Radio Remix on Spotify, so go out there and just uh, ch- check out um, Jerry Was Live and look for um, the Radio Mix, and we got Volume 1 coming up for the summer, the Summertime Radio Mix Volume 1. That's going to be big. It's going to be, be the top 20. That's going to be ballot voted. It's going to be the people's choice. So uh, that's what we're doing for you guys, y'all. We're trying to get, get your streams out there, y'all, so the people get used to streaming your music out there on Spotify, iHeart, iTunes. I think Apple Music is one of the big boys. Um, I think Tidal Wave is hanging in there. <laughs> and then you got Google Play. And you also got some new boys coming up. You got one called CastBox. You can catch our shows on CastBox, Lakeisha Mosley, and um, you'll be able to catch uh, Stephen Turner out there. All right, let's talk to um, Paula G real quick before we bring our guests out. What's up? What's up, Paula G? Paula G hey, right? hey, Jerry Voice Live, Batman, Late Night Radio. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was I was explaining to you a little bit, but they did have a couple of upgrades went on that, that wasn't in favor. A lot of the Spreaker podcasters are complaining so we hope they will straighten that piece out so that's why you guys don't hear oh, any wow. sound in the studio but technology it, yeah i'll figure technology, it out technology. yeah batman gonna figure i might just have to put you on a different channel so i can channel it in. Uh, same way so how you doing so how you doing i am fantabulous life is good god keeps waking me up every morning for some reason so yeah, yeah. It's all good. That's right. You got Sherika Lockhart coming <laughs> it's in. It's all good. Yeah, you got Sherika Lockhart coming yeah. into the queue tonight to talk to us. I think she's uh, been nominated, I believe, for a Gospel Choice Awards, if I'm not mistaken. I wow. That's, that's the yes. Yeah. Yes. See, she's famous. Yeah. She's big time. Amazing talent. Yeah, I told her she's big time. Gospel ch- <laughs> yes. You know, it's when you're walking in that passion, walking in your dream, doing it what it is that you love to do what God's blessed you to do. You just, hey, big things happen. That's right. So, Paula, <laughs> so tell people what you got going on before we bring our guests on. Oh, my gosh. Well, we are preparing for the live taping of my journey with Paula G. We are going to be in Maryland, July 27th and July 28th, taping episodes for our next season. So if you are interested in being a guest, if you're interested in gaining that international exposure, because Jerry Royce Live, we are all over the world. That's right. You need to reach out to us. Yes, either Jerry or myself for more information about how you can be a guest, as well as if you are interested in, uh, if your business product or service interested in underwriting a segment or the show, one, you know, one episode of my journey, uh, you can also reach out to us. But, I, you know, I'm excited about coming back to the studio in Baltimore. It's been a minute since I've been in my studio. Yeah, yeah. We had a great time here in April filming at the Good Acting Studio, the Black Box Theater with Michael Mario Good. And that was just phenomenal. Shouts out to Shay Samuels and 
um, Shalonda Williams and V Speak Life and Monique Williams, you know, all of the team here for helping us, Samuel Brown, Northwood, all the team, yeah, Stephen Marshall, right. I, I won't start calling names, I forget. Yeah, folks. Mosley, <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. Yes. Mario yeah, Pastor Good. Keller, we had a, yeah, Pastor we had a Keller. phenomenal Phenomenal time, and we're going to do it again come October 11th, yeah, yeah. right here in the ATL. That's right, Black Box back. Theater at the Good Acting Studio. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm that's excited. Be a little I'm different excited. Too. We are we are coming up on our one year anniversary on of my journey. And shouts out to WATC TV 57. Right. You know, uh, just a great team over there. Jaime Cunha, great team. Greg West. Michael Baloney, a great team over there that has really um, made us to feel like family. You know, I'm over there every other Tuesday doing mm -hmm. the Atlanta Live. I'm in the prayer room doing the Atlanta Live. So just a great family, a great team over there, and I'm truly, truly appreciative. Yeah. You and know, I appreciate you too, Batman. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. You know, I was talking to somebody today about – um the origin of W WATC has a lot of history. Now I'm, I want to look it all up because somebody had told me, and I, I think it was you, um, you was telling us how, um, you know, I think the piece about how the gospel part started to blow up. I think, I think with, by help, I think the help of TD Jackson, I think Donnie McClurkin was, was part yes. of that instrumental with, with yes. that piece blowing up. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. TD Jakes, Donnie McClurkin. Yes, very much so. Um, you know, it, it's gone through different phases over the years, but the core of it has been the same. And that is delivering the word of God, saving, you know, saving soul. Um, that prayer, when, when I'm in that prayer room on the second and fourth Tuesday, that is just, it, you can feel the spirit moving in that room. And when people call in for their prayer requests, you know, we have to drop them down on prayer cards. And after the show, those particular prayer car cards are binded together and they're, they're boxes that they keep mm. in the prayer room wow. with those prayer cards. In the, and they pray throughout the, throughout the uh, week, mm. you know, over, over those prayers. And then you have people that are calling back in and saying how their prayers have been answered. Mm. You know, it's a prayer that they called in for and, and, and how the prayer has been answered. So it, it's just the power of God moving in that place is just, is just, um, is just wonderful. It really, really is. And Shay was on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah so is Shay. Yeah. yeah, she was on. Yeah, yeah, she was on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a lot of people uh, have actually, been on she, there. Yeah, she was on Tuesday. I was in there Tuesday in the prayer mm -hmm. room Tuesday, and then she ministered on Wednesday. Yeah, you know, um, Helen Freeman. She been on Positive Power. She she was just there there yes. the other day. I think I saw uh, Sean Ray. Wasn't mm -hmm. Sean Ray on there before Sean Ray Price? Yep. yep Sean, Ray's Sean Ray's been on there. Yep. That's right. That's people. right. Mm -hmm. Ree's been on. Yep, Ree. Yep. Ree's been on. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I did see yeah. Helen this past week. Yeah, doing her thing. And Helen um, has a very talented son. I think he actually produced yes. all her music for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. She said he plays the uh, piano. And not, I think he was ministered on that episode. I didn't. I didn't uh, yeah, I catch it. I was kind of multitasking yeah. that night. But yes, yeah, yeah. Her son is, is. Her sons are very, very, you know, talented because you know her testimony was she, you know, put her career on hold to raise her raise her boys. Oh yeah, yeah. So. I remember that? Yeah, we had a had a mm -hmm. here. Well, look, um, Batman got to get off of here so you can talk to your guests. And I want you guys to have a great show. And let me just say hello to her. Hello, Miss Lockhart. Welcome to Positive Power, Double XI. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me tonight. Yeah, thank you for hanging in. I, I know I told you 11 15, <laughs> but we always we start the chit chat. We forget. <laughs> right, Paula? <laughs> yeah, hey. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you. That's how you, we do. That's how we yeah, do. Right. So have a great show, and I, I hope to meet you because I think you did mention you you're from the Atlanta area. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. I am. Well, we hope to meet you. We'd be at the Black Box, uh, the Good Acting Studio on October 11th. Live studio audience. You're going to want to be part of that. A lot of energy, a lot of positivity. Okay. Yeah. Right. We seen we some information. We're going to get her. Yeah, we're going to get her there. Connected. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, Y'all have a great show. Jerry was live. Batman Absolutely. out. 
Jerry Voice Live Worldwide Late Night Radio Positive Power 21 right here. Yours truly, Paula G, Lady Wisdom After Midnight. So glad each and every one of you have joined us for this show this evening, and I'm so incredibly excited to have this young lady with us. She was raised in church. She's from a spiritual and musical family. She is on a mission, one of which she will share with us this evening. So please welcome to Late Night Radio with Jerry Royce Live and Paula G, Ms. Sherika Lockhart. How are you, my sister? I am blessed, and I am a highly favored of the Lord. It's so good to be <laughs> Indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. You know, you your your career has just blossomed, you know, um in the past few years. So take us on the journey to how this all came about for Sherika. Well, you know, I, I wanna just you want me to tell you the, the story of how this this music thing came about? I can tell you that um this was totally unplanned. Um, I, mm. In the year of 2017, I was actually working in corporate America. I had been there for, some, well, uh, I'd say probably about 13, 14 years, and I was mm. actually laid off due to budget cuts. And, mm. um, you know, uh, it wasn't my plan. It, it was not on my vision board to do music. However, I, you know, I did music at church or whatever, but not uh, actually um, doing my own project. And so I um, was a little nervous at the time, you know, when I was called out of cor- corporate America. You know, I have a family, a husband, and two kids, and bills, and responsibilities. So I just didn't know mm-hmm. how this was going to lay out for me. So I began to, like, seek God, and uh, I was actually lay out in my in my closet for four hours a day just trying to find out what direction you want me to go. I just, you know, was nervous mm-hmm. and scared and you know, you know how it is when you get into a a a, a, a groove of uh, working yeah. and doing you know things and having um, bills and stuff. You just kind of get comfortable, and um, and so I was just like, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? And my brother, his name is Kedrick Gatson, He actually um, presented a track to me. He said he felt led to give me this track, and so I was wow. like, oh, okay, well. I'm not trying to do music like that, but okay. So I did right. anyway, and I still was praying, asking God, what do you want me to do? I don't know where you want me to go. And later on down the road, um, he just started downloading uh, lyrics. And uh, next thing you know, I found myself in the studio um, collaborating with a good friend of mine by the name of Josiah Martin, who uh, who co-writer with me and uh, did the vocal arrangements. Yeah. I found myself doing a music video, and bam, here I am today. And so... <laughs> God has really rocked my world, and I really understand the scripture that says, um, "His, you know, His thoughts are not our thoughts, and His ways are not our ways." <laughs> indeed, and the, and you know, I always, I always think it's important to share, you know, that journey because there's so many people that may be listening that are on that same path. I've got, I've got this vision that God has given me. I've got this gift but I've got a spouse, I've got children, I've got a full-time job. I don't know how I'm going to make this transition. So I think it's always, you know, such a blessing to them and encouragement to them to hear someone's journey, you know, to hear that same journey and to see how it's unfolding, you know, in your life. And and it's definitely an encouragement to, to others. Now, you had... In 2017, there were some things that occurred. Can you share that with us? Um, in 2017, when you say things that occurred, meaning some of the the difficulties that I was experiencing, or yeah, just some, yeah, some of the challenges. I know in your in your bio, you share a bit about uh, towards the end of two seven. 2017, how God had answered some prayers and closed yeah. some doors for you, opened some doors. Yeah. Well, I. I I, I, I'm going to be transparent. There were mm-hmm. um, there were some management things that transpired uh, with uh, just changing of management, and uh, I was kind of like the number one uh, pick on this, you know, on the pick on this, and so mm-hmm. just um, I, just I was just chosen to be picked on. I'll just say that. Wow. And right. um, even right. in in that in that test, um, it had went on for so long, but I mm-hmm. realized that okay, God, this is a test, and I'm going to pass it. And so yeah. I can truly say that throughout that that period of time in my life, 
I really took a stand for the Lord. I showed love. I I gave even when I probably well, man would say I shouldn't. Um, I mm-hmm. encouraged. I prayed. Uh, I prayed for others, and I continuously said that I was going to pass this test, even though I didn't know what my ending was going to be like. You know, you were um, going to pass. Right, and my prayer was, Lord, you know, seriously, it was it was really rough. I was like, God, either either remove me or remove him, and mm. um, he, he did remove me. But it was so many things that you know, mentally, it was wearing and tearing. You know, it, you know, it's something bad mm-hmm. when you come home and you you're talking about something that happened on your job, and you you dreading to go back to work on Monday and it's and it's Friday. Yeah. You know, and so, um, it, but it was, it was just, it was my test. It was my trial. And, um, you know, but everything happened for a reason. And um, if it wasn't for me being laid off, I, I can tell you this, I would not be in the studio. I would, I, this song would not have been out. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that, you know, because I was so, you know, in my zone and, and wanted to do the things that I was accustomed to doing. Right. So, yeah. Right. And, you know, and again, you know, when you, when we're on this journey, isn't it something how, and I love what you said, how you were determined that you were going to, you were, you were going to pass this test. You are not going to fail. You were going to persevere. You were going to move forward. You are not going to quit. And, and that really is what it takes. And I think sometimes when God gives us a gift, you know, that he, he, he at different stages, he'll, he'll test us to see what we do at that stage right. to determine, you know, how much more he can give us, you know, how many more doors he can open. Because, you know, as you're, as you're growing in ministry, as you're growing in God, as you're growing in the things that he desires, you know, us to do, there's different stages and there are different things that we need to be able to handle at those, you know, at those stages. So for you to have that wisdom and discernment to see, okay, this is a test. <laughs> yes. This is a test, and I'm I'm gonna pass this puppy. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And, you know, the thing about it also is that not only he wants to, you know, sometimes he wants to get us up to a certain place in in our walk with him. You know, so sometimes mm-hmm. it takes purging. You know, uh, mindsets. You know, change of heart. You know, um, just um, just a certain position that he's trying to get us to. So sometimes some more things have to die. And so I believe yeah. that, you know, um, it was a growing thing, but I was able to see the outside of the picture, you know, even though, mm-hmm. I mean, hey, I didn't right. know that I was going to be called off, but, um, you know, but still, everything happened for a reason. And, and, I, and I rejoice, and I thank God because I know that that was a part of my testimony. And I know that there are yeah. some people out there today that may be going through something in their lives, and, um, you know, but it, I, I encourage them to pray and ask God to get them strength, give them strength to get through it. So that way they won't have to face this particular trial again, or if they have to face their trial again, they'll be able to tell somebody else, hey, look, this is what happened to me. Uh, God did this for me, and he'll do the same for you. I mean, there's no bigger Amen. person, you know. Amen. So I just yeah. thank God for it. I thank God for it. You know, um, right now I'm still, I'm not working, so, you know, this is, this is, mm-hmm. um, this is me full time, you know. Um, this is my ministry full time, you know. And so I'm just constantly trusting the Lord along the way. And even in the midst of this season that I'm in right now, He is constantly showing Himself to me, uh, giving me lyrics like songs after songs. And He's really, like I said, He's constantly blowing my mind, constantly building my confidence, you know, mm-hmm. and just trusting Him in this. And so um, I, I thank God for the journey. Sometimes it's, it's a little nervous. But he's letting me know yes. he's right here with me, so I, I appreciate that. Yes, and working in and and through you in the process, working in. So now, were you that little girl that was singing around the house with the broomstick or the hairbrush when you were little? No, ma'am. I was a little girl <laughs> that was put that was put in <laughs> that was put on blast, as they say. Oh no! Come on, <laughs> give her the mic. Give her the mic. You know. Oh, and, you were... <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> No practice at home. No, give her the mic. She, nope. we gonna, we're just going to let God have his way. And I'm like, oh, you know, wow. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say. So I was yeah. that, that person. <laughs> wow, that's right, because you were raised in the church. So you were around music. You've come from a musical family. That's correct. So, yeah, so you just, it was like sink or swim, right? <laughs> yeah, it really was. But my parents, uh, all of them were singer, you know, sing and, and, and play uh, music and preach and just 
I mean, it's in the blood. It's definitely in the blood. Yeah. So, you know, no time for practice. We're going we gonna to just put you out there. Yeah, do it. <laughs> so tell us a bit about some of your music. Okay, so right, well, 2018, I released a music single called More. Um, and right now I'm in the process of working on an EP. Um, I'm pretty much about 80% um, uh, complete of that, so I'm looking forward to releasing that soon. But um, I, it's, I'm just, you know, uh, overwhelmed with the response that we received um, mm-hmm. about this single and how it has uh, compelled people to seek and cry out to the Lord for more. So wow. um, that's pretty wow. much that's where I... a beautiful I, song. Thank you. Yeah. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, the video is, is powerful. And, you know, I just know that you are blessing some folks with that because um, that is just really, really beautiful. And you, you've worked with um, some wonderful artists as well. Yes, ma'am. Share Hi. that with us. I, um, so back in 1998, um, you know, at first I was working with my parents in the ministry and mm-hmm. then I got an opportunity um, to travel to do stage plays. So um, I worked for a, co- a company out of Beverly Hills where I got an opportunity to work with uh, a lot of artists. Um, for instance, Shirley Murdoch, uh, LaShawn Pace, mm-hmm. um, Dave Hollister, um, Charlie Wilson, uh, Alexander O'Neill. I mean, it was a lot of people. Casey wow. and JoJo. I mean, it was mm-hmm. pretty a lot. And so um, I, I think that through that, oh, not only that, I also had an opportunity to tour with um, Dottie Peoples um, here in, in Atlanta um, for oh. a while. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she- um, yeah, it was it was a, a, a learning experience. It was also a, a growing pain for me because it was just like, you know, a child going off to college. That was my college. So I, I learned <laughs> a lot out there on the road. <laughs> Yeah, I like that analogy. <laughs> Going off the way college. I look at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was just here. Dottie Peoples was just here last weekend uh, at the uh, Juneteenth celebration oh, okay. uh, here in the Atlanta. Yeah, here in the Atlanta area. So uh, yeah, she. Oh my, you talk about Dottie Peoples. You, you going back now? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know how to rock it too. <laughs> yes, yes. She, she's going back. And speaking of rocket, you you've got. So, you know some very um, notable accolades of of people who have um, had the pleasure of experiencing your music. And um, if I could just share from, let's see, this is from Minister Willie Gadsden, Tabernacle of Praise McDonough. It's a song. He's speaking about you about more, I believe. It's a song expressing a need for God's spirit in these troubling times that we are encouraging, not only in America, but problems that the entire world is intertwined in. We need more of God's spirit. And then also from Prophet Brandon Gatson from Frankfort, Kentucky, when I listen to your music, my heart explodes with joy, passion, and hunger for Jesus and more music from you. I believe you're called to take us into a realm of presence that brings Jesus ooh, to his people in healing, signs, and wonders. Keep mm. it coming. Love you, my sister. Wow. Mm. Wow. What does that do to you when, you when you get those type of accolades? You know, it just makes me want more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. More. It does. It makes me want yeah. more. It, you know, um, that's that's my heart. That's my cry. Mm-hmm. I want more, and um, and I want to encourage others to do the same. You know, not to cry out just for material things or physical things, but seeking the heart of God. You know, um, yeah. to know that there's deeper depths in Him and higher heights in Him. You know, um, yeah. and to bring people back to, you know, how some people be overwhelmed with just the cares of this world that they know mm-hmm. who God is, but they forgot what He has done in their lives because mm. of that. You know, and so I, I want this, I want, my desire is for more to remind them of who he is and what he can do and what he has done and what he will do. And mm-hmm. so um, I, this just blessed me. That just made me want more. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Lord, Jesus. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so tell us how the video came about. Well, because the- it's kind of a story that unfolds with that. Yes, ma'am. So the music video, um, in the beginning, um, you know, I had to add my story to it. So um, in the beginning, um, actually in the music video, it shows that I got fired. Well, you know, actually I got laid mm-hmm. off. 
And so right. um, so here it is, I, I lose my job, and I, I go run into the church. You know, that's me on my mm-hmm. knees seeking God for direction on what you want me to do, you know, wanting more of him. Mm-hmm. And so here I am, I'm in the church, and I'm seeking the Lord, and then I find myself, um, you know, walking and trusting him, and he's leading me to the water. And um, mm-hmm. in the water, I meet my husband. My husband is actually the one that baptized me in the water. And so, you know, believing that when I get dipped, I'm coming out with power. And so um, it just, you know, that's my interpretation of um, wanting more of God and what I've been wow. through. Mm. That is powerful. Your husband baptized you in the water. When I tell you, Paula, you don't Ooh. understand, it was God sent because originally it was supposed to be somebody else baptizing. And and something happened, but you know how mm-hmm. God always has his plan. How He always has yes, his plan. He does. He want to do things. And so... um. It was an idea. We said, wait a minute, you know, my husband said he'll do it. And I was like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it was cute, you know, but it also <laughs> represents that he's here with, he's in it with yeah. me as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was it was powerful. It was powerful. Uh-huh. Now, uh-huh. On, on, the, on the fun side, um, mm-hmm. that water was cold. <laughs> <laughs> the water was 39 degrees. And oh, my on, gosh. Yes, ma'am. We had on wetsuits, you know. Oh. Um, yeah, so, um, but it was all worth it. And, and even in the beginning of the scene when I was actually in the church, I, I actually had the flu. I had a um, uh, a temperature of 102, but I had to go on because, you know, we had already paid these people. So we had to just yeah. go ahead and, and do it. So, um, yeah, we had to persevere, and in the meantime, there were also two ladies that were praying and interceding throughout the whole time of them and for the for the video. So mm. it was it was it was a story to tell. It was a story yeah. within a story. And you know, it, it, it's and I'm glad you shared that because you know a lot of times, you know, people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes. They see this beautiful woman of God, this family woman. She's successful. She's you know, has her music career going and, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, uh, one would think, oh, everything is just rosy in her life and everything is just wonderful. But, you know, we too on this journey of doing what it is that God has called us to do coexist with day-to-day challenges that everyone coexists with. Just like you said, you had the flu, but you, but the show had to go on, as they say. Right. You know, so so, you know, we're human and we all coexist with those life challenges as we're juggling this journey called life and doing what it is that God has called us to do. Now, you and your your husband have been married for a while? Yes, ma'am. We actually just celebrated our ninth year last month, Mm -hmm. and um, he has been my major support in this hour. I mean, when I wanted to give up, uh, when Mm -hmm. I wanted to just stop, uh, he mm-hmm. has been there, like pushing, like no, we can, we're gonna do this. This is what you know we've been called to do. Um, yes. He has been so supportive. Um, he he even put got me on a billboard. <laughs> so oh, funny. What? Yes, ma'am. And you he know said, I'm gonna get my baby on a billboard. <laughs> and the billboard was right off the exit of where my job was. <laughs> the job that let you go. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They- they can look at you every day. Every day. See what God has done in your life after they. Yes, ma'am. But That's he has oh. been my he's been my right hand definitely, yeah. and I thank God for him because you know a lot of times, you know, in situations like this, most spouses be like, "No, you you need to go. We, we need to go find a job right now." <laughs> you know, but yeah. he understand the call that's upon my life, and and you know he see God, and so I just thank God for him. Yes, ma'am. I think that also that also speaks to a man being secure in who he is and what he does. Yeah. Because like you said, you know, a lot of spouses, well, you know, you, you need to go get a job or uh, you need to do something else or what have you. But I, I think it's such a beautiful thing when you have a spouse that is supportive of what it is that you that you do. So I always ask this question, and I usually ask it of individuals who, you know, have been married maybe uh, 20 or plus years. But I think, I always think it's important to ask regardless of where you are on that journey in marriage, I think it's important to ask the question because our relationships are in, under such attack. Yes. And, you know, I always ask, you know, married couples to offer some words of encouragement as to 
what you feel is the key to your relationship and or some encouragement that you can give others out there that are that are in a relationship, what they can do to, to, to keep it together, to keep that glue together. Remember what what you got married for. Like, what was the main reason why you said, I do? And, mm-hmm. and I also feel like communication, you got to communicate. Communicate is so big. It's so number one. I mean, you know, I'm going to tell you, and my husband will tell you, one of my flaws is assuming. Uh, mm-hmm. I assume oh, things all the time. Come on. Come on. Communication, communication. Don't think you know. Ask. It don't yeah. think, you know, just ask. You know, communicate. Talk, talk, talk. And if you need to go see counseling, go get counseling. Okay. Thank and I you. encourage people that, that are dating, that are, yeah. are engaged, if you mm-hmm. feel that this person is the one, please go get premarital counseling. It, yeah. would, it, it would help. It would help enhance. It would help you see things that you didn't even know about your own self. So exactly. I encourage that as well. Communicate, yeah. get counseling, don't assume, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I just I just think that that's the main key. Yeah, because, you know, assumptions and, and, and misperceptions mm-hmm. are two things that can destroy a relationship, and it's so sad because, you know, what could have, otherwise been a beautiful relationship, you know, ends on assumptions and perceptions that, that you know, ultimately are not reality, but then again turn out to be reality because a relationship, you know, has ended. And I love what you said about communication and the counseling because we all, you know, we all walk around with these invisible suitcases that are filled with echoes of our past. Mm. And... Sometimes, you know, when you come together as one, like you said, a couple that are about to be married, you know, some of that invisible baggage and that suitcase, invisible suitcase, you know, might start to seep out and it can affect the relationship. And you're right. You got to know who you are and, and find out things about yourself before you enter the life of another. Because at the end of the day, you know, a relationship, you're, you come together to complement each other's not lives and, and not, you know, complicate each other's lives. So thank you so much for, you know, sharing that and um, sharing that encouragement as as well. Because like I said, sharing that, sharing your journey to, um, from where you were to where you are, the testimony, the challenges, the tests that you were put through, that has indeed blessed somebody this evening, somebody or somebodies that are listening that, you know, may be on a similar journey or thinking about embarking on a, a gift that God has given them. So thank you so much. So share with us because we want to... Um, Listen to your video. We want to watch your video as well. But share with us how the audience can stay connected with you. Well, I am on uh, social media. I'm on Instagram, and I'm also on Facebook, um, also Twitter. And so mm-hmm. they can um, follow me um, on, S- well, my name is S-C-H-E-R-I-C-A Lockhart, L-O-C-K-H-A-R-T, and that's on Facebook. Now, on Instagram, it is S-C-L-O-C-K-H-A. Um, they, so they can follow me there and uh, keep up with what's going on in my life. Um, also, they can go to my website, um, mm-hmm. which is my name, SherikaLockhart.com, and um, just see what's going on. Um, also, if you want to see the video, you can find me on my website as well. Amen, amen, amen. And any final words of encouragement or anything that you'd like to share that maybe you have not had the opportunity to share before we experience your video? Well, I just want to say, you know, I don't care how old you are, if God has promised something to you, if if you've received the word throughout your life and it hasn't come forth yet, trust me. If God said mm-hmm. it's going to happen, it's going to happen. His words cannot return to him void. Um, looking at my life, I would have thought that this would have happened to me when I was single. But God knew when the, te- the time for me to step out was now. 
So I just want to encourage yeah. them to hold on to what God has said, hold on to his word, because if he said it, he's going to bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we thank our guest this evening, Sherika Lockhart, for joining us. And without further ado, we're going to close out this evening with Sherika's video entitled, More. Be blessed and embrace the journey. Hey family, that was Sherika Lockett. Awesome song. Like to see that on the Spotify playlist. That's right, Volume One is coming up for the summer radio, the radio mix right here on Positive Power. That's right, y'all. It's gonna be an awesome summer, y'all. Lots of promo, lots of new music, lots of artists, lots of podcasts. We're gonna have a great summer, y'all. So hook up with us in July, y'all. That's right, July twenty first will be in Chestertown. At the Civil War Museum called Sumner Hall with Lakeisha Mosley. That's right. And all the volunteers. So check us out. We're also going to be hanging out with 
Jazz, the Sunday Jazz Experience, WKHS 90.5 FM. We're going to be carrying them right here on Positive Power, the jazz show. You'll be able to catch it on Spotify and all the other platforms that we stream music. So they're going to be joining us. That's right, DJ Jazzman and DJ Lady Praise are going to be joining us here on Positive Power. They got an FM radio reach over 2 million listeners. All the way to Philly, Delaware, Jersey. Well, not Jersey, but in Maryland and D.C. and Virginia. The Del Marva and the DMV. So we're going to have a good time um, collaborating with them. All right. So look for that, y'all. DJ Lady Praise and DJ Jazz, man, out of Chester Town. All right, y'all. We about to close out this one. But listen out for the Christian Party Line, V Speak Life, heading up the show. So hold tight, we got to run this video real quick on Facebook Live, and then we right back. Hold tight, y'all, out there on Radio Land. I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide on Positive Power Wood, Double XI. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double XI. 